In this Baldur's Gate 3 video, I'll be showing you how to play a Starion Baldur's Gate 3 if you want to add a bit more combat prowess to him than just what Rogue itself provides by adding either the Gloomstalker or Hunter subclasses of Ranger. I'll cover ability scores, class features, equipment, and will provide tips on how to get the most out of a Starion when played this way. Being a Rogue, a Starion is both good at ranged and melee attacks using finesse weapons due to high dexterity. Rogues also gain sneak attack damage when attacking with advantage or when attacking a creature standing near a friendly character as long as they don't have disadvantage. This can result in huge damage once per round, but rogues never gain an extra attack like fighters, rangers, monks, barbarians, or paladins, which is why I decided to multi-class Astarian with the ranger class. Since Astarian begins Baldur's Gate 3 as a rogue, his ability scores are in line with what a typical rogue might have. However, you will want to respec him eventually to get the most out of him, and this will allow you to take sharpshooter for your first feat without having serious ability score issues that need correcting. You can see here that we've given him more wisdom and dropped his charisma a bit. This is because rangers use wisdom to determine the effectiveness of their hostile spells, and we want to be able to use them effectively. It also boosts wisdom skill checks like perception and survival, which are both great for spotting traps and hidden objects and loot. Astarian has proficiency in perception, deception, and sleight of hand by default, so you won't need to choose any of those skills when respecting him. You'll minimally want to select Stealth and Acrobatics, but Insight and Athletics are also not bad choices. Athletics and Acrobatics help Astarian resist being shoved, and Insight can be used to deduce what other characters are thinking. Make sure to select Expertise and Sleight of Hand and Stealth to further boost Stealth checks and disarming traps and lockpicking. Note that you'll be getting Investigation and Survival proficiencies at your first level of Ranger. Taking a look at the character progression of Astarian, I like to keep my companions at least the class they begin the game with, since it feels like that's how Larian intended for them to be played, and again, it's no exception with Astarian. So we go Rogue to begin with, and pick up a lot of nice things from this. At level 1, Rogues gain Sneak Attack. Sneak Attack deals 1d6 extra damage at this level when attacking with advantage, or when attacking a creature standing near a friendly character, as long as you don't have disadvantage. Rogues must use a finesse weapon if making a melee sneak attack, though they can use whatever ranged weapon they want for a ranged sneak attack. At level 2, a starion can hide, dash, or disengage as a bonus action, allowing him to use any of these each turn and still attack. Hiding as a bonus action is particularly good for rogues, since it allows them to meet the criteria for sneak attack reliably each turn. At level 3, a starion will get to choose a subclass, and we choose Thief here in order to pick up Fast Hands and Second Story Work. Fast Hands provides a starion with a second bonus action each combat, which allows him to hide, attack, and then hide again. He can also cast Hunter's Mark, Hide, and then Attack to gain the benefits of extra damage once he multi-classes. Also at this level, a Starion's sneak attack damage will increase to 2d6, roughly doubling the damage he will gain when triggering it. Once reaching level 3 in Rogue, we'll multi-class a Starion with Ranger in order to pick up a fighting style, proficiencies, as well as some more skills. Note that you can choose either the Hunter or Gloomstalker subclass, which we will get at Ranger level 3, and I'll explain why you might choose either one of those once we get to that level. At level 1 of Ranger though, Astarian gains a lot of things. Not only can he now use any weapon in BG3, but he can also use medium armor if he wishes. And even though he might still use light armor since he will have high dexterity, there are many boots, gloves, and helms, etc. that are medium armor that he may wish to use. He'll also gain one skill proficiency, which I recommend taking survival with, but he can also choose one natural explorer and one favorite enemy. I like Bounty Hunter here for more ensnaring strike success as well as investigation proficiency, and I like Wasteland Wanderer Fire for fire resistance. At level 2 of Ranger, Astarian will get to select a fighting style and will gain access to level 1 Ranger spells. Ensnaring Strike should be one of those spells, especially if you chose Bounty Hunter at level 1. Ensnaring Strike allows attacks against the ensnared target to be made with advantage as long as you maintain concentration, which makes triggering sneak attack easier to do. Hunter's Mark should be the other spell you select. This allows Astarian to mark a target and deal 1d6 extra damage to it each time he makes a weapon attack against it, as long as he maintains concentration. This means you cannot keep a target ensnared and marked at the same time that you will have to choose. Because Astarian is a thief, this allows him to mark a target, hide, and then sneak attack for even more damage. For fighting style, I highly recommend archery as this further increases Astarian's chances of landing attacks when using a ranged weapon, and it's a bit easier to trigger sneak attacks at range with this setup in my opinion. At level 3 of Ranger, Astarian will get to choose a subclass, and I suggest either Hunter or Gloomstalker here because they will both increase the damage he deals each combat. Gloomstalker will grant him more initiative, allowing him to go sooner in combat more often, and will allow him to move further and gain a free attack on the first turn of combat that does 1d8 damage on top of whatever damage he would deal with the weapon and sneak attack damage, of course. This can boost his burst damage, allowing you to wipe out one target rather quickly. 
Gloom Stalker also allows him to go invisible once per short rest and provides Misty Step at level 5, which is great for positioning. Hunter, on the other hand, grants Astarian more consistent damage if you select the Colossus Slayer Hunter's Prey. This adds 1d8 damage to his weapon attacks once per turn if the target is below maximum health. This is almost always the case, especially since Sneak Attack will trigger Colossus Slayer if the target is at max HP when you attack it. So essentially you have to decide if you want an extra 1d8 damage each turn, or you want better burst at the start of each combat. At level 4 of Ranger, Astarian will gain his first feat, and I highly recommend he select Sharpshooter here to eliminate low ground penalties when shooting at enemies higher than him, but also because he can make an attack roll with a minus 5 penalty to gain plus 10 damage to every ranged attack. This typically nearly doubles Astarian's damage, and the penalty is somewhat offset by gaining advantage from hiding, and because we've taken the archery fighting style. Remember that you can always toggle this on or off depending on how hard the target is to hit, so you don't have to shoot with this on every turn. At level 5 of Ranger, Astarian will gain extra attack, allowing him to attack a second time each turn if he uses his action to attack, which he will 99% of the time. This further boosts his damage, and if he's a Gloomstalker, this means the first turn of combat he can attack three times. He will also gain level 2 Ranger spells and level 2 spell slots at this level. Pass Without Trace is extremely good here, as it gives him and nearby allies plus 10 to stealth checks while he maintains concentration. This is great for keeping him hidden during fights, just remember that you cannot use this and Hunter's Mark or Ensnaring Strike at the same time. At level 4 of Rogue, Astarian will once again be taking levels in Thief in order to pick up another feat. For this one, I recommend taking Ability Improvement in order to increase Dexterity for hit chance and damage. This will further offset some of the minus 5 attack roll penalty from Sharpshooter. At level 5 of Rogue, Astarian will gain more sneak attack damage and will also acquire Uncanny Dodge. This will allow him to use his reaction once per round to reduce the damage he takes from an attack that hits him by half. This is great at keeping him alive. At level 6 of Rogue, Astarian will get to choose two more skills to double his proficiency bonus in. I recommend one of these being Perception, so he's even more likely to spot traps and hidden objects. Survival is also good for similar reasons, but you could select Investigation as well. At level 7 of Rogue, Astarian gains more sneak attack damage and gains evasion. Evasion makes it so when Astarian is forced to make a dexterity saving throw against a spell or effect, he takes no damage if he saves against it, and only half damage if he fails. When it comes to equipment, let's take a look at Astarian's armor first. Astarian can use either light or medium armor with this setup thanks to Ranger, whichever makes the most sense depending on its bonuses. Two armors I can recommend are Spider Silk Armor and Yawn T Scale Mail. Spider Silk Armor can be acquired from killing Minthara in the Shattered Sanctum. It's a light armor that gives plus one to stealth and advantage on constitution saving throws. This helps should Astarian take damage while using Hunter's Mark and Staring Strike or Pass Without Trace so that he doesn't lose concentration on those spells. Yon T's Scale Mail also allows him to apply all of his dexterity modifier to his armor class despite it being medium armor and doesn't apply disadvantage on stealth checks like a lot of medium armor do. It also gives plus one initiative which helps him act sooner in combat. When it comes to weapons, for melee weapons, Astarian will likely use short swords of some kind since he needs to use a finesse weapon for sneak attacks when meleeing. I like both Ambusher and Sword of Clutching Umbra, but there are other good ones as well. Look for things that increase his damage. For ranged weapon, I like Least Expected since it has plus 2 to attack and damage rolls and adds 1d4 to attack rolls when firing it while at least lightly obscured. You'll be lightly obscured if you're hidden in any area that is not well lit. These two things help to further offset the sharpshooter attack roll penalty, making it even more likely Astarian will connect with his attacks from range and deal extra damage. However, you can use hand crossbows if you want for more overall damage as long as you can find some decent ones and you can still hit your target with sharpshooter on. When it comes to accessories, gloves of dexterity are not a bad choice for this build since Astarian won't reach 18 dexterity until very far into the game. This will improve his accuracy and damage early on and they also add plus one to attack as well, further boosting his hit chance. If you plan to use these all game, which you can, you can dump Dexterity on Astarian and put points into Intelligence and Constitution instead for better skill checks and more HP. Stalker Gloves are another good choice for increased sneak attack damage if you aren't having any issues hitting your enemies. Covert Cowl is a good choice of Helmet to further boost your critical hit chance, and I like Strange Conduit Ring to further boost damage while concentrating. Astarian is always concentrating on something with this build, so this is a great addition. Final Tips the general strategy with this build is to use a bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark if Astarian is not using Pass Without Trace. Then move to a location you can hide easily enough and hide with his second bonus action. Then use the free attack from Gloomstalker or just attack your target you marked with Hunter's Mark dealing sneak attack damage. 
Then you can attack it again until it's dead or you're out of attacks. Once the target is down, use your free cast of Hunter's Mark for your next target and begin this process again. If you're dealing with a hard to kill enemy, then you can spend your extra bonus action hiding at the end of your turn to avoid damage, or you can move in and melee with your offhand. Don't be afraid to melee with this build when the situation calls for it, because you can still deal great damage as long as you can trigger sneak attack. The favorable beginnings tadpole power is great to have on Astarian, really any character, since it further helps with his hit chance, and sharpshooter makes it easy to miss and anything you can do to help hit chance is a good idea. This only requires one tadpole to use, so it's a no-brainer on this build. And lastly, the Shadowblade Ring is not bad for this build if you want to lean more towards the melee side of things. This gives you a short sword that always has advantage as long as you are at least lightly obscured, so you can always trigger sneak attack. The drawback is that it does require concentration to use, so you can't use it and Hunter's Mark together. So that wraps up our Astarian build for Baldur's Gate 3. I will probably do more builds for companions over time, um, including a second round of more builds for companions. I want to get through one round of this and then get to specific builds for your main character. We will probably do some more later on. I think the next uh, companion build we're going to do is Will. So if you're looking forward to a good Warlock build, stay tuned for that. And as always, if you have further tips for players, you can leave them in the comments. Or if you have questions, leave them there as well. And I will try and answer them as soon as I can. 